Alan Clark again uh, with my little series of videos. Uh, this week, uh, well, it started with a friend um, who is an admitted telemite. Um, he's confessed to it. Um, asked me if I had ever achieved the uh, knowledge and conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel. Now, I generally don't answer those kinds of questions about what I have done or not done. Uh, that's my business. Um, but I said, well, in my next video I will talk about the concept of the Holy Guardian Angel and what it is, uh, from my perspective at least. Um, so, the idea of a guardian angel, uh, the popular conception is there's some angel with wings sitting up there in the uh, heavens, looking down and focused on us and everything we do throughout the day, every thought and feeling we have, etc. And looking out for us and guiding us when appropriate, saving our lives and all these sorts of things. Um, and that's just not true. <laughs> the universe is not that concerned with us on a personal level. You know, this <clears throat> idea of human exceptionalism that we're the center of the universe is bullshit. <clears throat> Plain and simple, it's bullshit. Um, <clears throat> But it sort of, at the same time, touches upon a reality um, that we do have this connection with higher levels of awareness. But it's not other. It's self. It's all self-awareness that we are connected to. Um, so, let me try to explain. It technically a little difficult. Um, the main area of concern here is Bina, the Sephirot Bina, uh, primordial or essential form. Um, the I expresses itself through essential meaning, which expresses itself through form. Wherever there is form, there is I. Wherever there is form, there is essential meaning. Essentially, form is composed of essential meaning. In Bina, there are an infinite number of forms. All form stems from Bina. Uh, so there are these infinite number of forms, uh, more than you can imagine. Uh, every form imaginable times a million, <laughs> a billion, a trillion. Um, it's really inconceivable the variety of uh, form that exists. So among those forms, well, okay, uh, all these forms in Bina um, effectively give birth to the forms in the universe in which we live. Uh, the universe of time and space and sequence. This is a natural product of the existence of Bina. Uh, the Bina necessitates a material, uh, a physical, uh, an astral, a mental universe, a manifestation that is part of Bina, where we exist. Um, so, all of the greater selves in Bina each give birth, give birth, that's a problematic statement because it's not exactly that way, but in the human reference points is, birth is the closest um, descriptor. Uh, Bina is very much like a mother in the human sense. It gives birth to uh, existence, okay? So each greater self gives birth um, to a number 
of individual selves. Um, everything that exists here in our experience has an individual self, a solitary mental body, a temporal mental body that exists throughout its incarnations. Um, um, so, each of the individual, each of the greater selves, <clears throat> which are oh, what I would call uh, composites of essential meaning that exist in Bina, and there are an infinite number of these composites of essential meaning, a combination of specific essential meanings that occur naturally, and all of the possible combinations of essential meanings exist as greater selves in Bina. So, there are composites of essential meaning that uh, manifest human beings, and only human beings, okay? Uh, they, when, when they manifest, they, the combination of essential meanings that they possess and then manifest are this, are what is capable of uh, manifesting in human form, of incarnating as human beings, okay? It's different than the greater self of the element gold, that can manifest only the mineral gold in the material realm, okay? Um, so, these greater selves that manifest human individual selves are what we think of as the holy guardian angel. Um, we really don't have that specific kind of um, relationship with the greater selves. They're not concerned with their every move, um, but, hmm, how to put this, we are our greater selves in material form. We are the manifestation of these greater selves in existence. Um, therefore, we are the greater selves manifesting in existence. We are a part of those greater selves. A greater self will manifest many. Uh, I think it varies from greater self to greater self how many individuals they in particular manifest throughout the, the stream of time and space. Um, so we have this connection with the greater self. It is part of us. We are part of it. Okay? We are connected permanently, always. It's not some special type of connection. It's common. <laughs> we all possess this connection. Um, and that is the Holy Guardian Angel, which I really prefer the term greater self, because well, it means something different than holy guardian angel and knowledge and conversation, blah, 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 okay? Um, so, we can, we are permanently connected with this level of our awareness. It exists in a non-temporal realm. There is no sequence, no time. It all exists simultaneously. These are difficult concepts to uh, really figure out, um, to grok, if you will. Um, and that's part of the abyss, shall we say. It's this conceptual difference between our normal state of awareness and an eternal state of awareness. It's always there and accessible to us, if we can wrap our mind around it, okay? Um, and it's the same with the greater self. Um, this is why so much is written about you know, establishing contact with your greater self and having a conversation, you know, getting information. It's just 
changing our perceptions and our conceptions. Um, it's no great thing that we've done. We've just sort of unlearned all the crap that we've been taught that says we're distant, we're apart, we're separate from this, this part of the universe. But in fact, we're intimately connected. So, um, we all have experience with this level of our awareness. Um, those moments when we know that something is wrong. We know what we are doing is wrong, and there's this little nibble at the back of our mind saying, shouldn't be doing that. That's the greater self. That's that level of our awareness that sees us in this broader perspective, and a perspective that is outside of time, that includes all of time in it. So often, the information we receive from our greater self is precognitive. It sees into the future. It sees the consequences of what we're about to do. And it tells us that's wrong, or that's right. It also tells us when we are right, when we're fitting in that groove, and things are going good. Um, so it constantly informing us about the world around us and our place in the world. Constantly informing us. So, the, the trick, if you will, to building the clarity of that connection is to simply listen to it and follow it. That's the thing. You've got to follow what your conscience tells you. Now, that, that's kind of a problematic word, except in English. Um, and our conscience in English, um, this word makes sense, but in other languages, it's the same thing as saying your consciousness. And it's not the same in reality. Um, well, it very simply, it's the little voice inside of you that tells you what is right and what is wrong, what is good and what is bad, etc. Okay? That's what I mean by conscience. Um, so, listen to that voice and make a habit of listening for that voice and then following exactly what that voice tells you. The more you follow your conscience, the louder it becomes. The more trustworthy a guide it becomes. And I say trustworthy because the subconscious mind can mess with you. And, oh, I just heard a voice that told me I should do blah, blah, blah. Well, it doesn't quite work that way. It doesn't come through clearly as a voice, it comes through as a knowing, a knowing in here, and in here, okay? Um, uh, it's not some dramatic, you know, the, the skies part, and, you know, you hear this voice and trumpets from the heavens. Um, um, it can be symbolized in that way, because sometimes it's like, oh my God, oh, of course, you know? Um, so... Follow that voice, listen to that voice, and be, religiously follow that voice of that inner knowing. And that will open up that level of communi that communication with this higher level of yourself that sees things in a much broader perspective. Uh, the greater self not only sees what's going on, experiences what's going on in your life, but in a vast number of lives. I have met several people who are uh, children, shall we say, of the same greater self. Um, so, there's different levels of experiencing the greater self. Number one is this communication through the consciousness this knowing, this ability to know. And it's not, in time, it's not limited to just knowing things about your own life. Um, this level of self 
accesses uh, what for us is information about a multitude of things. Um, it can uh, see into other people. It can see into other things. Uh, yeah. At any rate. Um, it can open you to all kinds of information and awarenesses. Um, it can unite you with the awareness of other things in ways that, um, well, in different ways. <laughs> um, <clears throat> in my own experience, um, at first, uh, my greater self um, appeared to me as a, a humanoid form, a very specific look to a humanoid form. In time, that dissipated and went away because my greater self doesn't have that kind of form. It doesn't manifest as a singular human. Um, if anything, it has the face of all the humans it's ever been and ever will be, all combined into one. Um, um, it's more just an awareness, uh, a sense of an awareness that I recognize as distinct and as me. Um, and I strive to let more and more of my greater self manifest. That is really how the I inhabits the manifest world, is through the creators, through their individuals, and through their personal selves. We are the I <laughs> experiencing existence in this present moment of time and space. Um, and we do that through the agency of our greater self. Um, so it's, it's a wiser, it's the wise aspect of our beings. It is intimately connected with chokmah, with wisdom, uh, and essential meaning. Um, yeah, uh, let's see, what more can I say? I think that's basically it. <laughs> I think I have spoken enough on the subject. That's my little spiel on the holy guardian angel, the greater self. Bye-bye.